Hello, Ren and Sully's first thoughts on Shin Ultraman. Yeah, that's it, right. We, uh, this last week, we were among the people that pushed Shin Ultraman to that, um, top five box office of a Wednesday night. Pretty cool. It's Which awesome. is insane. Which is insane for a, to like, a, obs not exactly obscure tokusatsu film, but a tokusatsu film in the United States in 2023. Okay, but if you take it and you divide it by number of theaters available... Yeah, like, it was only in, like, a thousand or so theaters, so... I'm, I'm pretty sure, like, it... Yeah. Um, it's probably about equal to them big blockbustery things. Yeah, I'm really proud of Shin Ultraman. Um, I was excited because, uh, some of you may well know, Ren and I were both big fans of Shin Godzilla. We thought that was an excellent movie. Um, this time... And I heard Anno got to be Ultraman for a little bit. Mm-hmm. Uh, motion capture for Ultraman himself was done by both Hideaki Anno and the original Ultraman. And the original Ultraman. How cool is that? That's cool. Um, and yeah, so we got a uh, great, um, so, um, Anno's co-director and closest collaborator, mm, his, his closest collaborator kind of took a lot of the driver's seat on this one. Higuchi got top billing for director, which is rightfully so. He, like, I... Ano is, of course, more famous, but frankly, both of these men are two of the most talented people in sci-fi filmmaking in Japan, and it is a, it was a big boon to get both of them working on this project. I do know for a fact that the theater had Ultraman trivia before we were there, and I also know that the, of the three trivia things that showed up, I got all three right, and I had not seen anything related to those three things yeah truth be told we're not big we're you and i aren't the biggest Ultraman people not, we're not even, ultra we're not super ultra stan yeah we're not super ultra stan like don't get us wrong we like ultraman uh i, I will fight for it uh, it's just that like it's not like common rider or kikaider or especially godzilla for either of us but it's... i know how important it is yeah and and i understand that it's a massive part of this culture yeah as far as pop culture goes it's one of if not the most important uh japanese superheroes and therefore ultra stands therefore ultra stands yeah and and of course it led to my favorite anime of 2018 that i watch every year for us, grid man. Um, yay. So I can't even... The point is, Ultraman's great. Um, and this movie, um, just kind of a first impression, wonderful add-on to that legacy. Mm -hmm. It is a love letter to classic Ultraman. It is a love letter to the art of tokusatsu. Um, they didn't use rubber suits. They opted for more um, CG for the monsters and kaiju and stuff. But honestly... Everything that I saw, I loved. Yeah, it, I really liked it. And unfortunately, Reyna missed uh, a little bit of it. I... Like, I fell asleep. Yeah. Um, I had been up way too long. And I had overexerted myself saving books from someone's trash can. So uh, you missed a little, you missed about half of the Zareb storyline, and I feel bad about that. But I got to see I got to see Mephilos, of whom I have a plush, um, and I got to see Zeton, of whom I have a tiny figure. You got to see Gabora, who was really cool. I loved what they did with Gabora. Um, this movie was very much a spiritual sequel to Shin Godzilla. I'm more shocked of how many toys I have of the characters <laughs> who are in the in that movie. Of all the ultra kaiju over the years, you managed to pick up most of the ones in that film who ended up making the cut for the movie. Yeah, it's it's worth noting. So, like, the movie really is, it, it, as I've kind of hinted, it's kind of four vignettes um, that kind of make a cohesive story maybe not and it's not as it's a couple episodes of a tv show yeah it really does feel like four episodes of an ultraman show is as one movie there are definite changes to the source material like uh, the biggest one being ultraman's not even the same guy it's not hayata it's, oh no uh, it's it's shinji kamigawa it's 
Water God. Uh-huh. Yeah. River God. Oh, no. But, like, I really... I liked what they did with the characters. I liked... There were times where the movie maybe felt a little bit cold. But, you know what? It was so much fun. It was... The action sequences were very over-the-top and silly. Uh, great kaiju design. Like, all of the monsters were really cool and memorable. I think it's it's important for it to feel cold because it's very much how Anno views how people interact with each other nowadays. I think there's also just the fact that because our our um bureaucracy our audience cipher character kind of is pretty um butt grabby. Oh, I was thinking, I was talking about Kamigawa, but oh. yeah, there's a lot of, the, the lead actress who played one of the Shobijin in Godzilla Final Wars, uh, slaps her own ass and sometimes other people's asses. That's a little bit weird. Um, that said, um, you, you do have an Ultraman who's a little bit further disconnect from humanity for a really interesting story reason, and I think it worked. Overall, I really liked this movie, and if you have any love for tokusatsu, or if you wanted a more lighthearted uh, thing to follow up Shin Godzilla with, uh, it is the perfect movie for that. And it literally does tie in. Yeah, it it is. It actually has a... It's not a spoiler. It's the first opening sequence of the film. Yeah. It... The opening title card is <laughs> Shin Godzilla. Sorry, not Shin Godzilla! And, and it very much is a spiritual sequel to Shin Godzilla, because aside from a nice nod to when Tsuburaya uh, just put a frill on a Godzilla <laughs> suit for an episode of uh, the Ultra series, they put a they put a horn on on the Shin Godzilla costume, and that's one of the go- one of the Shin Godzilla one of the um, Ultraman toys that I have. And, and it's also the in this costume, it, <laughs> it's the first kaiju. And it, it's it's a lovely, it's not just a nod to the production of the Ultra series, but it's a nice thematic nod to Shin Godzilla is a movie about if a kaiju showed up in Tokyo Bay in 2015, how would we deal with it? And this movie is, okay, kaiju are now kind of a, a recurring endemic problem. How do we continue to deal with it? And and everyone's <laughs> just like, why do they only show up in Japan? <laughs> Like, that's a major part of it. Why do they only show up in Japan? Um, Shin Ultraman is a really special movie. Obviously, it was only in American theaters for two nights, so it's too late to see it in theaters now. But when it's on streaming or if it's on home video, pick it up, give it a watch. Um, And if you don't like it, we'll find someone who wants your copy. Damn right. Because I'm not going to pretend this is a movie for everybody, but by God, is it a fun movie? <laughs> and honestly, if if you hit like a downslide and you find yourself like yawning a little bit, because sometimes, sometimes the you, it's episodic. Mm-hmm. You can pause it, just like the Snyder Cut. <laughs> <laughs> it's not take a nap and come back. It it's a little under two hours long though. It's not five hours like the freaking Snyder Cut. But is. like you know yeah. what I mean. You can pause it. Take a nap, go do the dishes, come back to it. Come back to it, yeah. It's it's four vignettes set in this world. It's a great movie. Give it a watch. Uh, Shin Ultraman gets the Ren and Sele uh, seal of approval. Hell yeah. Yay! Uh, as a... <laughs> 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 